Well, poor Dion is so stressed about what he's going to do with Gobi until he can get him out of the country. So let's see what happens today. He had thought about asking Lu Zin to watch Gobi for him, and he knew that she would if she could, but she lived in a small apartment on the ground floor of a big building. There were too many people coming in and out all the time, and she said it wouldn't be safe. Dion believed her. The last thing he wanted was for Gobi to disappear again. I can try to find a place for you to stay with her while you're here, Lu Zin offered from the front, as Richard translated but it may take a while. Dion sighed. It has to be a hotel. I need to be able to keep her with me. We'll think of something, Richard promised. We'll make it work. They pulled up to the gate and waited as Mr. Ma buzzed them in. A minute later, they were pulling up outside the house. Dion had been worried on the way over. What if something had happened to Gobi while he was gone? What if Richard had been right and this was all a scam? What if they hit her again to get more money? out of him. But Mr. Ma answered the door with a smile and Dion relaxed. Then he was inside and headed toward the living room. And there was Gobi. She was okay. When Gobi had woken up that morning, she had been worried. Where was the tall man? All, but the two men from the night before were here. They seemed nice and the tall man had been smiling at them. So Gobi figured it was okay. They fed her and gave her water, and she sat and waited. Then she heard a car pull up. There were voices outside. The one man went to the front door, and when he came back, the tall man was with him. Gobi yipped and ran straight toward Dion as soon as she saw him. He picked her up and hugged her, and she licked his face. Yes, I missed you too, he told her. Don't worry, I'm not leaving again. He turned back to Mr. Ma. Thank you so much for taking care of her, Dion told Mr. Ma and his son, and for finding her. It is our pleasure, Mr. Ma replied, and Richard translated. Mr. Ma's son not nodded as well, and he winked at Gobi. I'd like to thank you properly, Dion continued. We are going to have a special dinner tomorrow night for all the people who helped search. I'd like you and your family to come as well. Then I can present you with the reward money. This time, Mr. Ma shook his head. We would be honored to attend, but I do not need a reward. It was true that Mr. Ma's house was very nice. He and his son looked comfortable and well-fed, but Dion was still surprised. Are you sure? I promised a reward to anyone who found her, and that would be you and your son. Mr. Ma smiled. You are very kind, but no thank you. Dion shrugged. I can't force you to take the money, he admitted, but I will bring the check anyway, in case you change your mind. Then Mr. Ma's wife came in. She was carrying a tray with tea and pastries. Dion wanted to go back to the hotel with Gobi, but knew it would be rude to refuse. They had already done so much for him, so he sat on the couch again with Gobi in his lap. Richard sat on one side of him and Lou Zin on the other. The Ma's sat across from them, and Mrs. Ma poured tea for each of them. Thank you, Dion said as he accepted his cup. He took a sip. It was good tea and very strong. I never asked what you do for a living, he said to Mr. Ma. Their host smiled. I work in jade, he replied. Oh, you're a sculptor? Dion had seen jade pieces in museums. They were always beautiful shade of green and milky rather than clear. But Mr. Ma laughed. No, I mean I deal in jade. I buy and sell it for art and other uses. Oh, sorry, Dion smiled. He felt a little better about the Ma's now. They obviously didn't need the reward money. That meant Richard had been wrong about this being a scam, or at least the Ma's finding Gobi wasn't part of it. He still didn't know about how Gobi had gotten loose in the first place. They sat and talked a little longer, then rose to go. But just as they were getting ready to leave, another man entered the house. Dion thought he looked familiar, but he couldn't figure out why. The man marched over to Dion. Hello, I am Nurali's husband. Dion shook hands with him. Hi, Dion said back. Nurali's husband laughed. And that was when Dion recognized him. He 
He had been one of the drivers for the race, not the one whose car Dion had climbed into, though. The man released Dion's hand and turned to study Gobi. He knelt down and picked her up. She didn't growl, but she didn't lick or squeal, either. Yes, Nirali's husband declared. He turned Gobi around in his hands as if he was studying her from every side. This is Gobi, all right. Then he handed her to Dion. We tried our best to keep her safe for you, but she escaped. She's going to need a good fence when you get her home. Dion didn't know what to say to that, so he just nodded. Let's go, Richard said. Dion nodded. Together they collected Luz in and said goodbye to the Maws and left. Dion glanced back as they walked out and they saw Mr. Ma's son smile at them. Then they were out the door and Dion breathed a sigh of relief. Now they just had to figure out how to get Gobi into the hotel with him. This is never going to work, Dion complained as they got out of Luz In's car. Richard grinned. It will work, he insisted. Trust me. Dion shook his head, but finally he sighed. Okay, I guess we'll give it a go. After all, he didn't have any better ideas. The two of them approached the glass doors of the hotel's front entrance. The armed guards standing there eyed them, but made no move to stop them from entering the building. Past those two men stood two more on the other side of a metal detector. Dion hesitated when he saw the guards. He had gone back and forth past them several times, but this would be the first time he was trying to do something criminal. Go, Richard hissed behind him, and Dion took a long lurching step forward. He wobbled on his feet a bit, and the heavy unzipped duffel, duffel bag slung over his shoulder slipped free. No, Dion shouted and lunged for the bag, but there was simply no way he could get to it in time. The bag hit the ground, falling completely open, and out spilled a huge pile of posters and snacks. Papers, chips, cookies, and nuts went everywhere. Dion moaned, dropping to his knees and grabbing the bag. I'm really sorry, he told the guards and the hotel staff who were hurrying over. Don't worry, I'll pick it all up. I'm really, really sorry. He started scooping up posters and shoving them back into the bag. Several of the hotel staff started to help him gather everything. The guards didn't bother to help. They were laughing, however. This was probably the funniest thing they had seen in a while. Richard walked right past them, and they barely even noticed him. Finally, Dion had everything back in the bag. He rose to his feet, thanked everyone for their help, apologized again, and then stepped through the metal detector. It didn't beep, and with a wave at the, at the guard, Dion headed for the elevator. Richard was already there, and together they waited for the next elevator. Richard was carrying a bag too, but his was a little smaller. It also matched his coat well, the, so well that it was difficult to notice. They rode up to Dion's room together. Once they were both inside, Dion tossed his bag on the bed and took the smaller bag from Richard. Setting that bag down more gently, he carefully unzipped the side that had been closed. Then Dion reached in and lifted Gobi out. So what did you think, he asked her. Your first elevator ride, far as I know, did you like it? Gobi licked his cheek in reply. Dion laughed. I'll take that as a yes. Gobi had enjoyed the ride in the funny bag and the strange box that moved up toward the sky. And then when it stopped, the doors had opened and they had stepped back out, but everything was different. Before, it had been a big open space with lots of people standing about. Now it was much narrower and darker, and there were doors on both sides. They stopped at one door, and the tall man pulled something out of his pocket. He fit it into a strange hole in the door, twisted it, and suddenly the door swung open. Then they were in a room, her and him and the other man. She remembered and liked from the race. And finally, the tall man pulled her out of the bag. Yes. What now, Dion wondered as he sank down into the hotel bed with Gobi on his lap. Richard shrugged. Lay low. We've got that dinner tomorrow night, but nothing between now and then. So just relax. Get some sleep. Hang out with Gobi. He ruffled her fur. Call me if you need anything. I will. Thanks. Dion watched his friend go. Then he turned to Gobi. 
Looks like it's just you and me, he told her. He reached for the television remote. Want to watch some TV? I should warn you, though. We only get two channels. Gubby didn't seem to mind. She curled up beside him on the bed and quickly fell asleep. Dion laughed. He wished he could nap that easily. Then he turned on the TV and turned the volume down so he wouldn't wake her. Well, they snuck her into the hotel. I certainly hope they don't get in trouble for that. We'll have to see what happens tomorrow. Have a great day.